Never mind three cream crackers, just one of those and you need about a pint of water. Right, uh, we will start with, um, w by, by trying to nutshell the, the issue that we spoke about for the first half an hour of this programme, this drug seizure in, in Ireland, Jim. In two minutes, what do the IHRB, what does the sport need to do now to, to restore confidence in it? Well, they need to step in and also to, to see that they're, they're taking some sort of action. Uh, I know that the, uh, the government are, are the ones who have instigated this whole inquiry and this whole raid. Uh, we have to ask the questions in racing, why have they ordered that raid? Uh, why has it been carried out? And, but it's because it's implicated so many licensed people. And that is the big issue. And that's what really the, uh, the Irish racing authorities have to address. Until we know if there is a very serious issue, what these substances are, what quantities they were found in, where they've come from, who's shipping them, who's receiving them, and crucially, why, then we don't know, as I said to you, whether this is a 10 out of 10 story of real magnitude or whether this is just something that is a little murky and is a bit more than a clerical issue. I think it's far more, far more murky than... than uh we in racing would like to believe, you know, and, and you can't get away from it, Nick. You know, these sort of, this, this persistent exposure of these, these details. I mean, this is, you know, I know that, um, uh, that uh, Noel, Noel Mead has um, dismissed Kimmage as, as, as a sensationalist journalist. There's and not I, actually much, as I, as I but, said in the know, interview, he, in he, that piece, he's just reporting speech. He is, he is, and I mean, it's, it's, it's verbatim. You know, it's, it's written down exactly what, what these people actually said when he had interviewed them. So, I mean, that in itself, the reactions for, from some of the people that are mentioned, that is in itself uh, quite damning. Yeah, and you'd have to ask them, you know, you'd have to ask why are, they, why are they reacting this way? As Noel said in his interview, maybe it's just because they don't want to be associated with anything to do with this sort of story, you know, which he says is understandable, which is, is, you, know, you can see. But the other side of the the, uh, the coin is, uh, why are they deny it, denying it? Tony Mullins um, has tweeted about this. He says, it seems the main issue with the raid in Monaster Evan is whether the vet was using drugs with an EU licence or not. This is a pharmaceutical war and nothing to do with performance enhancing drugs as far as I can see. But that's an interpretation, a deflection from somebody within the industry. But until we know, Jim, we're in the dark. Exactly, and we have to know soon. And I think it, it is beholden on the IHRB um, and the department to, to clear up exactly what we're dealing with here in terms of uh, the confidence in the sport. Uh, the Cartier Awards took place this week, 31st edition of the Cartier Awards. Cartier's racing representative, uh, Harry Herbert, stepped down after 31 years, and the winner of Horse of the Year was St Mark's Basilica. Jim, was he the right horse of the year? I think his credentials were outstanding. Four-time Group 1 winner. Uh, and then the turn of foot he's uh, displayed in the Eclipse off a slow pace and also uh, his, the uh, fighting qualities he showed, uh, although drifting wide in the Irish champion, uh, both, both indicated that he was top of the class. You know, you have to say that he was he's an outstanding horse. The, the, the uh, disappointment, of course, is that he, uh, he's uh, been retired prematurely. It was a pretty good night for his connections as well, who also picked up Cartier three-year-old Philly with Snowfall and St Mark's Basilica, uh, got Cartier three-year-old Colt as well. I felt for Baid not getting amongst the winners. Yeah, I mean, uh, a horse who uh, has really taken off and I'm sure his t turn will come next year. Uh, just looking at the two-year-olds, Native Trail and Inspire. Well, Native Trail might not be the best two-year-old trained by Charlie Appleby. Well, you never know. Caribus might be. You know, it's a, it's a big question to be asking. But he was the horse who, from day one, stood out. Physically, he was imposing. Uh, he, as Charlie said, he's a, a real two-year-old. Um, people were saying, well, no, he's going to be a better three-year-old. Well, he's, he's had a physical advantage at two. It'll, it'll uh, remain to be seen whether he can carry that into the three-year-old uh, years, or th his three-year-old year, when the others catch up. And uh, just on a on a point of Appleby, he might have the the three best two-year-olds in in training in the in the UK in uh, his Breeders' Cup winner, Modern Games, Caribus and Native Trail. He might have the the three best older middle distance colts as well in Hurricane Lane, Adar and Yabir. Which of those do you think is the best? Uh, of the three older ones, yeah, um, I would say Hurricane Lane. Uh, Adair, I don't think we've seen the best of him. 
as yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say Carivas for next year. And just going back to the Cartiers briefly, which will lead us on to our next talking point, David Ellsworth, the Cartier Daily Telegraph Award of Merit, the Daily Telegraph and David Ellsworth, two entities with whom you've been very closely involved in your time, Jim. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, he's, uh, Elsie, as we know, is a, a master trainer. The tributes that were paid to him were much deserved and uh, spot on, some of the tributes that were paid. I think Richard Hannans was probably the, the warmest and most heartfelt. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 he's been a great character, but also uh, an, a, a gifted horseman and a gifted trainer over the years. Just one small story about him, just on a personal level. Uh, he took a horse out to Hong Kong in the early 90s. It was the early days of the uh, international races. It was a horse called Land Yap. He ran about fifth in the cup, I think it was. The same year, Rich, um, William Jarvis took Polaris mm -hmm. out there. Polaris wouldn't go into the starting gate. This, uh, this uh, brought about one of the biggest refunds uh, ever in uh, the history of the, of the event, uh, which of course uh, was, didn't make uh, anybody very happy, including the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Uh, but um, the next day we retired to a bar in, uh, in Chim Sa Choi uh, it was uh, the Grandstand Grill at the Sheraton and we were looking out over the <laughs> harbour and um, uh, Elsie was there uh, and William was there, William Jarvis uh, and I think uh, Vic Vicky, uh, Vicky Owen, uh, which, uh, who later won classic fame as Victoria Pakenham, uh, she was there. Uh, James Slade and his father, uh, in whose colours Polaris had run, and everyone was a bit gloomy. We were all standing at the bar, and everyone. And my great friend Robin Park was there from the South China Morning Post, and uh, Elsie uh, stamp, stamped his hand on the bar and he said, "Listen, I've got a certainty for you. Let's 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 all let's all get a bit excited about this." He said, "I've got a certainty at Cheltenham, uh, and this is in December. This is early December." So we're all ears pricked, uh, and he says, um, uh, its name is oh so risky. You get on, <laughs> try it. So uh, Robin, Robin Park, he bolted for the door, it was before the days of, of mobile phones, uh, got on the phone to, uh, to his bookie uh, over here, and uh, got, on, got the 33s, uh, and uh, I think we, we had to make two with 25s. And of oh, course, yeah. uh, oh so risky, came back here and got beaten in the finale at Chepstow, uh, but then came out and won the triumph by 12 lengths. So good on Elsie. David Ellsworth, what an amazing career it's been under both codes. Uh, talking of an, uh, an amazing career, Dermot Weld has nominated Tanawas as the most notable in, in five decades with a, with a training licence. What which do you make is, of that? Which is saying something, isn't it? Because he's, uh, he's had some fantastic horses uh, over those uh, five decades. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean an outstanding filly. We've seen, we saw the best of her, I think, in the Breeders' Cup last year. Uh, the, uh, the the finish, the turn of foot that she displayed. Uh, a real disappointment for everybody. Uh, a real letdown that she got beaten in the arc. I know it, uh, the conditions were very, very testing, uh, and I don't think Christoph Sumion could believe his eyes when when the the big head of the German horse uh, loomed and went past him on the outside. Uh, but no, she, a, a, an absolutely game filly. Uh, and she'd had enough by the time she went to Del Mar. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I think that, that he peaked her this year for the arc, didn't he? Ground yeah, went against yeah, him. Yeah. And really that And he said there. before the race, he said, you know, who knows? You know, and, and you could tell the struggle. Uh, the, 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 the well, the well yeah. shrug tells you a lot. I didn't sense great confidence from him before the no, race, in no, fairness. No, no. And she ran a really gallant race. And I was interested in Noel Mead's um, points about Colin Keane earlier on when we spoke to him when he was saying he thought he was the, the best since Canaan and he was always, almost putting him up there alongside and almost above. He dare, he dare not. He dare well, not put him past him. Uh, <laughs> it's sacrilege to you to absolutely, have someone above Canaan, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, he, he, Mick was outstanding, you know. Uh, but Colin Keane is a young man and he's, he's, he's right up there already. But the way people talk about him now, the way that Weld talks about him, the way that Joe Lyons has been talking about him for three or four years, Yep. Not just he's good, not just he's one of the better jockeys around now, but he could be one of the best we've ever seen. Yeah, and, and the belly doyle interest as well. You, that's always simmering in the background. Mm. Well, that seems to, have, seems to have fizzled away a little bit. Yeah, it seems it? to have, yeah. It was, it was big last season, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, right, let's talk about the small fields again. I, I posed this question to, to Lydia Hislop on my podcast on Friday. At what, at what point... Does the tipping point come? What is the tipping point where we say enough? 
we just have to redraw this. We've got too many two and three runner races and it's it's killing the sport. Well, or is it just one of those things? Well, it's not just one of those things because it's persisting and, and you shouldn't have it really. Um, there are certain races in the calendar we know that are stepping stones to other races and they must always be, be there. Uh, the fact that that race at Sandown, uh, the Chantry House one, uh, has been farmed by Nicky Henderson tells you that Nicky uses that as a stepping stone to later races and it's an important part of his program so it's playing a useful role for him but if he's got the best horse it's not playing a useful role for anybody else who wants to then be handicapped uh, or, or you know it's going to affect their their mark no matter what they do uh, and, and if I you know the one the the, the favoured horse runs below par and you finish two lengths behind that horse on the book, that's what you're handicapped on. Now, you know, that, that is But isn't there a provision in these conditions races that you don't go up if you don't win if, if you run in a, in a novice chase? Well, I, I remember, I, I seem to recall that that did come in at, at one stage, but is it applicable now? And, you know, it doesn't matter what you say. A handicapper, once he sees a run, will also re always revert to that. So maybe he's not handicapped immediately, but... You know, the handicapper can't forget what he's seen. He can't, he cannot dispute the facts. And if a horse is finishing three lengths behind a horse who's rated 20 pound higher than he is, uh, well, he's got to raise him. But if, isn't this a bit to do with too few horses um, in the UK of this caliber, too many horses in too few hands at the top level. So that, again, takes away that element of, of competition. And also the efficiency of these top trainers who don't really want to run in any race that they feel that they can't win. So isn't that a, isn't a combination of yeah, all Yeah, a combination of, of, of all, those, all, all those factors, you know. I mean, there's, there's too few horses in too few hands, uh, sorry, too many horses in too few stables is, is, a, is a very good point. But you do see some of the leading stables running their horses against each other. Not foolishly, but when it comes to the point where they have to, they do. We'll pivot internationally again, down to Australia. Spanish mission, fantastic run in the Melbourne Cup for Andrew Balding. One of only a couple of runners from Europe in the race this year. It stays in Australia. Jim, is that a massive surprise or not? Um, it is a bit of a surprise because of a, a couple of factors. One is that uh, obviously he's a horse who could go back and win the race. Um, and when I say go back, he's not going to go back, he's going to stay there. That also incurs a very uh, severe GST, or what is here, VAT situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that this was one, a bone of contention in the negotiation of, of the sale. Uh, who paid the, the GST uh, down there? Uh, which amounts, uh, very similar, it's about 10% of the value of the horse. So. Uh, his, the value of the horse was significant um, and they've sorted it out now. It's going to be owned by Bray Sokolsky uh, and uh, also uh, Aussie Keir. And they're the people, uh, Bray Sokolsky was also in Incentivise and in Very Elegant. They both were. Aussie Keir we know here is the uh, former owner of Marmello who went down there and, mm -hmm. uh, and he's, he's got a lot of horses. So. And, and of course, they're also in very elegant. So they have a real stronghold now. They've sent Spanish mission to Peter Moody, who's now going to have a, 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 a sort of a, a stronghold uh, when, on, on these big races when, when he comes uh, into, the, into the next season. So it's a, an interesting move, but an understandable one. The wash up from the Melbourne Cup, uh, there, everybody's happy that uh, there were no fatalities in the race. Uh, they dodged a lot of bullets there. However, nobody is very happy about the draconian measures that have been uh, applied. The veterinary checks. The veterinary checks. So, and that's at official level, I, I suspect. I think they, they, they understand. Uh, however, you know, it's, uh, they have achieved what they wanted to achieve. And I think they've sent the message out to everybody here that don't send an unsound horse or don't send a horse that you think is even suspect. William Buick has um, had a wonderful international season as well as a, a great domestic season as well and um, you are quite closely associated with monitoring his progress in in your role for for Godolphin Jim um, have you seen a different rider this season I think I've seen a more confident rider a, a more a happier rider somebody who's happy in himself and, and it's um, you know I think he's his um, his riding is he's come he's, he's matured you know he's 
the, the ability was always there, the talent was always there, but now uh, the, 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 the sort of confidence and also uh, backing himself and understanding that he has the, he, he, is, he is well up to it and he, he's, you know, he's now in a position where he's going to, I think, propel himself to a higher level. His rides, the three, the three Breeders' Cup um, you know, they were, win, wins were a real showcase uh, of his talent, uh, particularly your beer. Uh, an honourable mention, though, for Ryan Moore, uh, while we're talking Breeders' Cup. Mm. Um, I thought of the whole meeting. Uh, Ryan, Ryan rode a horse on the Friday in the undercard, a horse called Astronomer. Uh, if you ever got a chance to have a look at it, yeah. Michael Tabor horse, uh, it was one of the great Del Mar rides. Uh, I don't think he ever left the fence any more than about uh, six inches. Uh, it, was, um, it was an absolute classic. Uh, and uh, and I, I, you know, I take my hat off to him. I think I think it was just a, a wonderful thing. But going back to Buick, I think he can be champion uh, next season. There's no doubt about that. And do you think Ashid Murphy will go for the championship next season? For all his talk that he might not. Well, I don't know. I think he'll see, try to see how it works out. I think you know, it's it's um, what they, what do they say? You don't think about championships mm. until. Um, August, well, probably these days it's probably about July, isn't it? Um, I'm yeah. not sure I'd buy that. But uh, no, I think you'll see how he goes, you know, and uh, what he's got lined up. All right, those were this week's talking points. <laughs> Subscribe to Racing TV to be notified when more Luck on Sunday videos are appearing online. And don't forget to join me for the show every Sunday morning from 9 o'clock with the best guests.